Welcome everyone in XRP Army land. Um, today we have another wonderful experience for everyone. Um, XRP agent has decided to come on and share with everyone his uh, <laughs> XRP story. And without uh, any further ado, uh, uh, the XRP agent, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone and let's kick this thing off and see where it goes. Good morning, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. This is the XRP agent with the XRP Army News. I'm excited to be invited. I I'm nobody in the space. You know, uh, Brad Kimes, CKJ, uh, the Working Money Channel, the Modern Investor, just to name a few. Those are the big dogs, you know, and uh, that's where I get all my uh, information from. So, hey. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> hey, I, I feel exactly the same way. And the reason that I decided to go the interview route is I feel like that we have got the news covered by some of the greatest influencers on the planet. And uh, the modern investor is actually one of the first ones that I ever ran into. Mm -hmm. And in, a, in an interview I did just before uh, I got on with you, um, Yeshua was talking about him as well. And I love the way that he gets so wound up and he talks a million miles a minute. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and also that's, that's how I, uh, I adopted my intro and outro. Yeah. Uh, my intro is with the minor investor. My outro is with the, um, working money channel, I believe. Yeah. But yeah, you know, he gets all, uh, all into it. And then, you know, like if you're hit, his videos are about like an hour or 45 minutes long. I usually listen to him when I'm driving to the office. And it's funny because he's like, the bird just keep on hitting my window. What's, what's wrong with that bird? You know, it's like, did you hear that? They're working on something in the other apartment. I'm like, you know, when, when we blow up in, in real estate, you know, it's like, I it, wish my servant hurry up and come up here with my food. <laughs> so, it, I get my, the thing I get the biggest kick out of is when he he's speaking so fast and he absolutely butchers a word. And then about four seconds later, he'll catch it in his head. He'll start <laughs> laughing at himself and then he'll repeat the word that he just brutalized and then just keep going forward like nothing happened. So I really see, love the personality of that guy. See, that's the thing about the cryptocurrency space is like there's, you know, there's a taste for everybody. And with different people, you know, I keep it simple. And like you said earlier, is so much news out there. Like when I started my channel, I was like trying to, you know, XRP agent, try to give news and stuff like that. Um, it's still not a lot of news regarding real estate, but it's it's still developing and it's still, you know, it's some, some news out there. But I, it's like uh, after the the, the shutdown uh, because of the global event, I, I, I just left the news to the people that that are more professional than I am. And if there's something comes up, I think I could put my own little spin to, I put it on there. But one thing I, I it just irks me is, it's like, it doesn't matter if, if you like Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, VeChain or whatever, you know, w once we have a cryptocurrency bull run, all bolts rise and it's gonna shake everything out. So it, it, if you like this new hot coin and it doesn't last. It's just about the process. We're just so new, so new into the space. We don't know how it's going to develop like the internet back in the day. The first time I heard about the internet, I was working at uh, Hanna-Barbera Studios in North Hollywood. And you know, I, I forget how old exactly I was, but somebody's like, well, Captain Kirk dies in this new movie. And that was Star Trek Generations back then. Right. I don't think it was like 91, 92 or something. And this was a whole year before the movie came out. I was like, how you heard of that? Well, I heard it on the internet. I was like, the internet? Yeah, this college internet thing. You know, you should try it. I'm like, what? It, it wasn't until like a, maybe five or six years later, I've got my first dial-up account with EarthNet. Or, uh, or, yeah, ding, something. Ding, ding, ding. Oh yeah, and then it takes like eight hours, twelve hours to download something, and the last thirty seconds to a minute, 
you're grinding your teeth because yeah. that's when most of the time you're going to find out if it if it's an error or you're going to have to do the whole thing all over again. Yeah. But but the way I um I think you you wanted to know how I got uh into how, cryptocurrency. How you got into crypto and and kind of how you know where you have evolved or how you feel about it now and where you feel like we're heading. <laughs> okay. Um let me know if I talk too much. But nope. um, uh, well, it, it was like a couple of years ago and I'm, I'm a real estate agent in Southern California. So it was another real estate agent was telling me about, um, what was that, uh, coin, um, um, the one that everybody was get, get, getting into and, and they was getting so much interest today and stuff like that. And he kept on like, oh, that coin, that coin. I was like, what? I was like, mm -mm. and then, you know, one day uh, he was like, yeah, you should get into it. I'm doing this and doing that, you know, all this other stuff. And my father was like, always like, you know, look at worst case scenario, plan for worst case scenario, uh, see how something is now and plan later on. You might not be fully prepared for what you're, you're going to run into, but at least you'll be more prepared than you wouldn't have. So I'm like, all right, let, let me check out this coin or whatever. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue too. It's gonna irk me until I figure out what it is. You know what coin I'm talking about, right? Or it, is it Bitcoin? No, uh, it was the hippity hoppity coin that everybody was getting interest on. Uh, that was that fell apart. It was like, I would say a scam. Uh, the one that was based in Texas. Uh, I, I'm not sure where it was. I had this one guy who's like, yeah, Big Connect, Big Connect. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so he yeah. was telling me to look in that. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to look into it. And tomorrow I'll, I'll let you know how I feel. And that's that. He was like, all right, that's all I ask. So I checked, checked into it. The first 10, 15 minutes, I already wrote Big Connect off. But I was looking into Bitcoin. And uh, and I think this is uh, maybe a little after it blew up, so it's it's fizzling out now. And I wasn't really into Bitcoin, so to speak, because I'm still, you know, um, brainwashed with everybody else. Like, oh, it's it's a drug dealer's coin, and this and that and that and this. But what got my attention was when I was looking into uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency technology was blockchain. And I was like, oh, if they use this for real estate, it, wow. it'd just be a no-brainer. All these title companies would go out of business <laughs> overnight because you have the you have everything on the distributed ledger technology and it's undisputed. And there's no way where the governments or rich people or or <laughs> somebody that's that's smarter than me can swindle you out of something. And I was like, well, let me look into this more. And then you know how it goes. You know, you're you're you like you want to invest in. And so the first thing you invest in is Bitcoin, you know. And then at the time before you can at the time, you can only use Bitcoin to buy Ethereum or XRP or something else. And then over time, I, you know, I started learning about other stuff. And uh, I heard about a uh, um uh, Proppy, and that's a real estate uh, uh, company that puts everything on the blockchain, sell houses on the blockchain, and everything like that. And I was like, "Oh, I'm following that," and and I start studying about XRP, and that's basically how I I got into uh, the XRP army. You know, so I, I look at it like this is a long game, not a short short game and a lot of people just crying like all oh, the the 20 cents, twenty cents. I, I would like oh if it goes down to five cents because of this utility and all Bye. these banks are by high, I would be like sure. I was like I'll sell my mother. <laughs> I would sell Bye. my mother. <laughs> I'll sell somebody <laughs> but no I'm just playing. But you you know what I mean is because this comes once in a generation. And um, it, it, you you just have to, it, it just goes back to 
study your history. It's like when Jeff Bezos in 1999 had his office in uh, in his house or somewhere and it's all junky. You know, he started out with selling books. Now he's selling everything under the sun, you know, and but uh, I don't know. I, I think I just saw the video this week or last week. And even though I'm in real estate, I still, you know, like try to get my uh, morning fix of uh, of CKJ or or different people. Um, it's like mostly I, I like in the morning uh, since they do it early is the working money channel. His is about 10, 15 minutes. I knock him out. You know, when I'm getting ready uh, to get out and then once I'm on the road, that's when I hit the modern investor. And then during the day, you know, I, I uh, hit Brad Kynes, his little uh, um, show with his new channel and uh, CKJ, uh, his, his stuff and a few other people. But How about Bearable Bull? You ever listen to Bearable Bull? Oh, man, Bearable Bull. I, I, I um, It's like when I'm doing work at night. I, I'm usually uh, uh, this is the bearable boy here. I, oh man, I, I love the bearable boy, and I I love just about everybody in the 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 space, and you know it, it's like when you're just as you know I was going one direction. Let me say this before I forget it. It's like it doesn't matter if you don't like so and so or whatever. We're all here for the same thing to invest in our future and take care of our families, right? We all Very may, we might all have different views of different things. Um, um, is it XRP Viking or X, XRP Venture, I believe. XRP Venture, he's like, hey, pay off your, your house and this and that and that and this. You know, I, I professionally disagree because, you know, if the government wants your stuff, if it's easier for them to uh, execute a, a imminent domain on your property when it's paid off. But if you have a, a, a corporation, like I'm, I'm doing the corporation now, affordable multifamily solutions. So that way, once all this stuff, you know, blows up, I could start helping people in Los Angeles and Watts, uh, veterans and stuff like that. But, you know, even though, you know, he believes in one thing, I believe in another. I could be right. I could be wrong. He could be right. He could be wrong. But I respect his opinion. He builds houses. He develops and stuff. I'm not I am not into that. I, I He could teach me a lot. So he must have a reason for what he believes. And you have to understand, we're only as smart as our little circle. And when you uh, take the time to li listen to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or... Um, that's Robert Kiyosaki, by the way, and and uh, read the book or listen to the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, you realize you're only as smart as the five or six people that you hang around. So if you hang around people with like, hey, let's get high. Uh, I had a one night stand last night. You know, um, um, oh, the government is not doing anything for us. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life. Now, if you hang around people that, hey, uh, you know, I, I, I'm working on a new idea. I, I, I'm developing my business. I'm starting a new business. How can I uh, uh, learn more? What is the next great uh, book? Uh, what kind of uh, new motivational um, statements I could say this morning to have a great day? That's how you build yourself up, you know. And you, we have all these people who's like, oh, this and all that. I was, you know, it, it just makes no sense. You know, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. I'm not attacking anybody. But, you know, there, we're, a lot of times we're at different levels. You know, I take myself, for example. You know, I learned a lot from my father, but I didn't learn it. Most of the stuff I learned from my father is not when he was alive. You know, he passed away 12 years ago, but I respected him. You know, even if I disagree with him, I, uh, you know, I respected him. But yeah. a lot of stuff that he taught me, it didn't click until after he was gone, you know. And and I, I thank the Lord for, you know, um, he was still around when the financial crisis happened. But 
from what he told me, always uh, protect yourself, uh, prepare for worst case scenario. That helped me through the financial crisis because while everybody else was using their house for an ATM machine, I had a school bus company. And so it's like my wife, I got married three times, you know, so uh, this is the third one. And I finally got it right this time. But my second wife, <laughs> she was like, oh, we could buy a new car and, and this and that and that and this. I'm like, wait a minute. Why would I take out equity out of my house to buy a new car and add that to my 30 year loan? I'd be paying for that car three or four times over. Believe me. Well, understand me. I'm not in real estate at this time. Right. You know, but I kind of always wanted to get into real estate, but, you know, I kind of had the my mentality, but I had my, I had two buses. I was like, well, Hey, let me take $50,000 out of the house. I remodeled the inside of the house. My father was in a nursing home because he had surgery. And I was hoping that once he recovers, he'll come back home. Unfortunately, that, that didn't happen. Uh, but, you know, it's like, Hey, since he's out of the house now, I could remodel it in that way when it's easier to uh, uh, ask for forgiveness than ask for permission, <laughs> you, know, you know, even though uh, we had a joint tenancy, you know, but uh, I fixed the ha- fixed up the house and then I bought another bus that's using the money wisely, you know, and so many people was like bought cars, boats and all this other dead assets. And uh, once the economy uh, went down, you know, the government was like, hey, we're going to bail out the banks and we're just going to screw it to the people, uh, you know, that's that's little. And you see all these people on the streets and stuff like that. And then the government uh, says, well, hey, (laughs) you're going to have to pay uh, all that money you you took out of your house back, you know, or some kind of uh, fee or something. And it is crazy now with. Uh, millions of people taken forbearance, uh, the government using the money printer, just printing money like it's out of style. Uh, uh, they're, they're like, oh, well, hey, uh, we need to send the kids back to school because so many people, so many kids and, and, and people are dying because they're not going back to school. I'm like, what kind of reality you watching? Because you know, I'm in California. Uh, the government just just shut down California again. You know, and you know, uh, I think it's um, uh, it's uh, Alaska, not Alaska, but um, somewhere there. Different other countries are giving their citizens like two thousand dollars a month, right? It's like, hey, close down, stay in the house. We'll pay all your bills. Just don't infect everybody. And they're they're doing a recovery. Uh, I, I got a site up here. It, it shows there's like close to 12, you know, million or whatever. Uh, it's multi-million people infected in the U.S. And yep. it, it, it's getting worse. And, and Dr. Fauci says, hey, we're, we ain't seen the peak yet. I'm like, what? You know, so. And then, you know, and then we haven't seen the second wave yet. So when I when I go out and about, I, I got my mask. You know, I I, I use social distancing and stuff. And we, we, it, it, it's not about you know um, uh, taking away your civil liberties. It's protecting me from you and you from me. You know, so we can all recover because you know March, th- uh, Friday the thirteenth on March. That's when uh, California shut down. You know that that it, the world changed in California and the nation after that on Friday the thirteenth. So you know it's like all these years we didn't have nothing bad on Friday the thirteenth. It just kicks in. But you got to understand, it's like we need actual leadership because we have so many people that have small businesses going under right now because the government says close and they're saying, well, Hey, wait and see before we do the stimulus. And I'm probably getting off the, the track here, but, That's okay. but right now um, is the best time to just store your bags. And just, um, just a little side note, like I mentioned earlier, I'm in the process of setting up my 
my um, nonprofit corporation, 501c3, uh, Affordable Multifamily Solutions Community and uh, Development. Uh, that way I can buy different properties, fix them up, and help low-income families with, with housing, uh, teach different uh, low-income youth, like, hey, uh, you need to know how to budget your money, uh, where's the uh, money going uh, in the future with uh, pay ID and all this other stuff. You know, they're not going to hear that in school. And uh, just a side note, when everything was cr crashing uh, a little bit before then, I, you know, me and my, my pastor is like, hey, we knew, hey, the, the good, the market was real good. It, it couldn't last. And we saw that it was going to tank. The thing, um, he set up two nonprofits, one for me and one for him. But when everything crashed, that's when LI Unified, you know, I had some money in the bank. But when LI, when everything started crashing, I, um, work started driving, drying up with the school bus company. LI Unified was talking about going uh, going bankrupt. They owe me close to $50,000. Then I became uh, delinquent on my mortgage because they was like, oh, yeah, you don't have to pay. We will refinance you, you know, give you a modification. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, because I had like a, a um, I think my, uh, when he passed away and left the house to me, I had like an 8% interest rate. I'm like, wow, <laughs> had that for a while, didn't you, Dad? <laughs> you know, so. Let's read out uh, that. Excuse me. Let's refinance that one. Oh yeah. So, but they the, was like, oh yeah, we do a modification. Well, it, it took me like six months and a week before my sale date because they wouldn't take any money. They would try to take my property because I wouldn't like other people. I had I had over three hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in my property, and it's a R three lot. And if you don't know real estate terms, you can uh, basically put a multifamily like a duplex, you know, or something in the back. Since I already have a property in the front. So they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to take this. You know, we're losing all this money, but we're going to definitely take you. I had to declare bankruptcy a week after I declared bankruptcy. Oh, they said, oh, you're approved for the hemp. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, thanks. You know, <laughs> so because they couldn't take my property. So but. Since he kept developing his nonprofit. I didn't do anything with mine. It, it you know, it just uh, deleted or whatever, um, faded away or whatever. But I, I was going through divorce. I was, I had a nervous breakdown and I was, uh, I just started over. That's when I got into real estate. And that was about uh, eight years ago, but he, he kept on developing his nonprofit. Uh, and since everything crashed and burned, he, he was, uh, he was getting different cities. It was like, it, I forget exactly what city it was. And he, he just started his nonprofit. Everything was taken care of. The city was like, hey, we need to get this uh, eight unit apartment building off our books. If you give us 350,000, we'll give it to you. He was like, well, uh, I don't have any money. He was like, oh, okay, well, give us $50,000 down payment or something like that. And, you know, we'll finance the West and, you know, uh, take this uh, property off our hands. Uh, did you hear me? I ain't got any money. So they <laughs> called back later and said, well, hey, this is what we'll do. We'll sign you over the property. You'll lease it for like three years. You collect all the rents. You take care of all the maintenance. And after three years, uh, you put down uh, so much. And uh, after uh, so many years, you pay off the 350000 Well, in three years, he paid it off cash. You know, so and that was uh, that income from that first uh, deal in his nonprofit helped him fund other properties. You know, now he, he has over 30 properties. He have a wow. big ranch uh, out in the um, um, uh, near Redlands or somewhere and helping youth uh, and, and God, God bless. So it's like. Anytime where there's a down market, that's the best time to collect your profits. You know, that's where the most millionaires are made. So right now, while there's blood in the streets and everybody's like, uh, you know, uh, 
singing praises about the stock market going up because all they're doing is is uh printing, printing money and keeping it up then once the election happens you know everything's gonna crash and burn so uh right now it just you know hey just keep your head about yourself put put a little bit in the bank and just don't touch it don't put in more than you can afford or whatever try to take all the um stimulus you can if they do another iddl try to apply for that if uh your business uh you know you have a youtube business you know and you you know you're 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 trying to succeed you know and and you're paying different people get the ppp you know you know if, if the government is trying to get give you money hey take it because they're gonna they always in your pocket they're gonna get the money back you know yeah uh, so, so, so it, where where you feel like we are in the economy right now? Do you feel like that we're heading towards like a reset of the total global economy with a debt jubilee, or do you believe there's any way that we can crawl out of this hole? And the the biggest problem that I personally see when I look at that USA debt clock, it's not the 27 trillion on the left hand side. It's the uh, $147 trillion that Americans have in unfunded liabilities. I mean, mm -hmm. do you see any way out unless we level the playing field, reset, and have a debt jubilee? Do you see any other way out? Well, um, I, I, I see right now is everything's a mess. You have our, our senators that that keep on going vacation and they're acting like, oh, it, it, it's, it, it's nothing going on. Oh, let's wait and see. Now you could take that two ways. Either wait and see, they're totally disconnected from everything. And it's kind of hard for me to fathom that you are so rich and powerful and you're getting all this money from other sources, right? Because, you know, hey, you're a fancy senator, senators, that you don't see, oh, okay, all these infection rates are going up. Different states in the country are closing down. And also, you know, you, people are out of work. You're talking about canceling the $600 um, plus up. You know, I, I think that is asinine to, to stop it. Half of the people ain't even got their unemployment yet, and you're going to stop it before they get even get on. Now, that's the worst, you know, the bad part you you thinking about people, right? But what if, what if they're like, oh, okay, well, we see everything is crappy in in the world, right? Because like, if if you're on a boat and you're a sailor and you have choppy water are you going to be up you know are you going to be nervous or upset if you're in a little choppy water no because you're used to it you understand it's like hey i'm a sailor and this is what happens but if you have people on the boat that's not used to the choppy water they're going to be crying screaming and oh what was me but what happened if they like oh they already know what's going on they already know hey we're going to be switching to the gold standard and XRP is going to be backing it up. We're going to be doing a national, uh, a global reset. You know, we're just uh, waiting for the right time and the right circumstances to just shut everything down, reset everything, have a debt global jubilee or whatever you want to call it. That's my best case thinking and thanks to the bearable bull for you know educating me on that yeah. but but that, that's what i'm thinking you know it, it's kind of hard for me to think they're just so unplugged that they they don't know and don't care what's going on now that could be the case and you know lord help them but it, you know it's like have a little bit more compassion when you're talking uh, talking about people that's going through different things, getting evicted out of their homes because they can't pay their rent, you know, because uh, you forced the government to shut down, but you were like, oh, well, 
here's twelve hundred dollars. You know, budget that ten dollars a day for three months or whatever. And, that and doesn't they, make no they, damn sense. And they mismanage everything so bad. I heard the other day that um, they spent they sent one point eight billion dollars to dead people and three point eight billion dollars to the Catholic Church. And right. I, that that I think we need blockchain even more as as a result of how disorganized and how screwed up the government is in the way that they have. I think uh, incorporating blockchain will help all of these kinds of things run a lot smoother. Well, yeah, and um, I I think I I saw somewhere in the legislation and one of the legislations uh, they want to utilize blockchain to uh, kind of, what do you say? Kind of police uh, nonprofits or different um, entities that way, that way when the government gives out grants and different things, it, everything's on the ledger, everything it, it is going to be distributed properly. And then they're going to be policing how you spend that money. It's coming. It's not here right now, but it's coming. And then that's why it, they, they have to shutter the whole system and, and rebuild it. And when you're talking about doing something that intensive, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Now, what I see happening is um, um, one thing Trump did say, I, I, I truly believe, it was like uh, once uh, I, I, I believe he's going to lose, but hey, he might win. But once the election happens, the market is going to tank. And I think that will be in a good way because it's like, all right, it's going to tank. It has to crash and burn. We have to reset everything and do it right from the ground up, you know, kind of like the Phoenix uh, prophecy or whatever. Yep. And, you know, you have Madame Lagarde, you have all these different people from the World Bank and the, the banks and stuff like that already talking about uh, switching over to a digital currency, a CDBC or, or something. Um, I know. It, 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 it's all coming. It just has to take time. But all we have is time. Just, you know, all you have to do is protect yourself, protect your family, and, you know, just try to put a little bit aside because eventually we're going to have a bull run. Now, yeah. we might have the bull run once everything tanks, everybody like pulling their money out of uh, a stock market to put in the crypto market. The crypto market every day is getting more and more streamlined. Like uh, PayPal is talking about, oh, well, hey, eventually you'll be able to uh, buy crypto from PayPal. You know, I, I personally, you know, uh, use <laughs> PayPal in, in my business and, and millions of people use it. But once everything starts trans you know start moving around then you you're gonna see it now uh since i i've been introduced into crypto i try to talk to friends family um my broker different things you know they're looking at me crazy you know after the first couple of people that said you know like oh yeah it's not gonna change this that and that and this i'm like okay you know and you know if somebody talks to me about it i, I talk to them but it, it, it it's like it's like um, Amazon. You, you didn't know Amazon was going to be as big as it is now in, Until it in 2000. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it, it, it didn't take him. It, it didn't take him overnight to be a success. A lot of people was like, well, how did you become an overnight success? Well, it took me 20, 25 yeah. years of working my <laughs> ass off to yeah. get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I see. Um, blockchain really transforming real estate and far as real estate agents if they don't keep up with the technology uh, a good portion of those real estate agents going to be obsolete now i don't think it's going to be a, a totally um a la carte system where you know all you have to do is go on your phone and buy a property you know, with smart contracts, everything is is moving into that direction. But a lot of times people need, you know, to work with other people to, to have that person, personable experience. Now, everything changes every generation. 
So the generation we grew up in, me and you, it's like when you, you went to an open house, you actually had a person, you know, you 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 sat down, you 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 uh you wrote an offer back in the day, you had the uh MLS uh book. Now uh the MLS is on the internet. Everybody and their mama could prop, uh, type in uh, the address to a property, know as much as you know. You know, you go people of, uh, what was that, peoplefinder.com, you get get all, you know, the 12 addresses they used to live in, the 15 numbers they used to have, and grandpa, grandpa, and grandma, you know, uh, all their relatives, you know. But now with the global event, it's kind of speeding that up a little bit. Now you're having virtual open houses. You're having uh, different people use DocuSign more. They're using programs like, uh, you know, StreamYard or Zoom for video uh, teleconferencing. You know, it's like I was like talking to an absentee owner uh, a couple of days ago on Zoom. He was an older gentleman. He was like, you know, I helped him set it up and I was talking to him about his property. He was like, I can't wait to use this to talk to my grandkids I hadn't yeah. seen since this pandemic. You yeah. know, and 10 years from now, I was like, what? You still doing open houses? You don't buy your you don't buy your house on the phone? You, you know, so, so what do you think? What, what, what would you say in your opinion right now is the number one obstacle that we need to overcome to push us closer to to mass yeah. adoption? Say that Legislation, again? if I'm and, saying that right. Yeah. Because yeah do, you it, feel like that, do you feel like we're getting closer to that with the politicians in the United States? Because China's not waiting. Right. And and um I think we're this is my two cents. I think we're probably more uh, ahead than they let lead on because if we're not more ahead than we lead on and they're, they're way behind China, then it, it looks. Then what I'm saying about the politicians, like they're laying, laying back. Oh yeah. We, we, you know, we know what's going on. All we have to do is flip the switch or whatever, because we already have everything uh, set up. We already did the homework and, and all we have to do is wait for the right time to implement everything. Now, if they're not in that position, they're playing catch up and that's very dangerous for the United States because if China's way ahead of us and, you know, it, it, it's like Bitcoin's the top right now, but if there's a bull run and Bitcoin's all coin, it's like U.S. was on top. Now U.S. is an all coin now because China, you know, hey, they wasn't playing. You know, they 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 did what they needed to do and they started moving forward. And eventually everything is going to be on a blockchain. It's like with V chain, you know, following different foods, vegetables, uh, different products to make sure it's uh, legit and secure and um, um, proper. You, you, you're going to have, uh, you know, everybody, you know, it's like, uh, it's kind of scary because I, I'm a Christian and we, you know, believe in, uh, you know, heaven and hell and we'll believe in, you know, um, the mark of the beast and stuff. What happened if, uh, you know, it's like, hey, in the next couple of years, uh, they say, hey, your baby have to have a microchip or you might have to have this uh, transfusion with these little microchips in your blood, you know, so that way we'll, you know, keep track of you or not to keep track of you, but hey, we know that you're uh, B plus, your blood type, your you have diabetes, this, that, and that, and this. This is for your own safety. And right. and and now they have uh I was listening to the Working Money Channel this morning. They have a, a app now where different people are volunteering their information. That's Facebook right there. <laughs> you volunteer the information, they make money selling it, you know, yeah. but they're vo volunteering their information with their medical information. And uh, if they've been uh, screened for the global event uh, <laughs> and it goes into this database so that way everybody can see is like, oh, OK, these people are good or, or not so good or whatever. Um, all that does is it, it needs to get more and more adopted. And then uh, like out here in California, uh, about 
10, 15 years ago, they said, hey, it's mandatory when you license your animals, the animals had to have a chip, you know, and, you know, I, my pastor was, oh, oh, this is the beginning signs of the market at base. Don't, don't have your animals chip, you know, it's like, you know, it's like uh, I told him no, you know, when one of my dogs got loose and, and uh, you know, they chipped it. And they was like, oh, no, we didn't ship it, you know. And then um, come to find out when he got lost again, they called me. It was like, oh, you're, you're, we got your dog. Like, How do you get my dog? You know, oh, yeah, we just scanned the chip. I was like, what? And I was like, uh, but, you know, you don't have to worry about that on the dog going to heaven and hell. But, you know, hey, technology is getting so crazy and so, so uh, advanced where, you can go to the hospital for a simple procedure, come out and uh, you're chipped. You know, you, you don't know. Uh, about 20, 25 years ago, when I had dial up or whatever, I was watching some kind of show uh, on YouTube or something. I think it was or something. And they were showing that th this test town where uh, different people had uh, microchips implanted in them. And it was like they showing this one guy going into this ambulance and the ambulance, the the sensors was embedded in, in the, the frame of the you couldn't see it. But when you when you push the person in, the screen was like, oh, this is uh, Johnny B. He's 52. He has heart condition. This, that, and that. And this. It just read up. And I was like, wow, that was like 20, 25 years ago. And then you had this other person walking through the uh, uh, the store at the checkout. You know, the lady's bagging all the groceries, but it's being scanned at the same time. And then on the screen, you know, since they, it, you couldn't really see the scanners, but it scanned the individual and it had the, had the total. And the lady was like, would you like this out of uh, this account, that account, or this other account? It was like, oh, that one's fine, you know, and didn't have to touch nothing, didn't have to do anything. This was 20, 25 years ago. Imagine how the technology is now. It, it's scary. Yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, <clears throat> so if you, if there was one message that you wanted to send out to everybody in XRP Army land, what, what, if it was on your epitaph and for some reason you expired in the next week and a half, what, what you gonna do that to me? <laughs> yeah, what would be the one message that you would like to be able to make sure that uh, everyone in in our crypto army, uh, XRP army, knew from you? Well, if, if you're putting it like that, um, it, it doesn't matter about money, XRP, or any kind of cryptocurrency. You know, we're only in this life to choose which way we want to go, either the heaven or hell. And, you know, I know different people have different religions, different faiths and stuff like that. But this is what I believe. You know, I believe in the Bible and I believe that Jesus Christ died on our on the cross for our sins. And if that was on my epitaph, it's like, hey, you, you only have one thing in this world to do is choose which way you want to go in this world. And if you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you, you will make it scarcely in because the Bible said we will scarcely make it in, you know, the righteous. You know, and it's a highway going going to the other place. You know, um, when I was younger, I used to always preach, uh, you know, fire and brimstone. But it's like I, I matured a little bit, and it's like, hey, you know, you get you get a lot more uh, bees with honey than you get with fire. But on the cryptocurrency side, I would say just just be patient. You know, you know if your family, friends think you crazy and stuff like that. They thought mm -hmm. Einstein was crazy. You know, they thought, you know, uh, uh, I think uh, they said that Einstein couldn't even go into uh, college because they, you know, they didn't uh, let him in. But different people, different successful people in the world, at some point they thought it was crazy or whatever. But you have to keep failing forward to succeed you know like rocky you know he, he he wanted to sell his his movie rights they were like no 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 but you know they finally said hey we'll 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 buy it but we'll give you next to nothing and you only got 12 weeks to shoot the movie you know a lot of people don't know that well, i don't know if it was 12 weeks but it was like they was they gave him 
obstacles that they thought was impossible to make. So they 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 uh, can you know reap the rewards later. But he persevered, and now he he's a multimillionaire, and he has several movies to his credit. It, we're going to fall. We're going to go through different things. The world is going through a crazy mixed up, you know, uh, global event right now. And just pray for your friends, family, relatives, because there's a lot of suffering out there. And I don't know if you saw my channel, but one of my first videos was I went down to uh, downtown LA, Skid Row. And I'm like, look, look at all these people suffering right now. We're living in the richest country in the world and not do, they're not doing the damn thing about it. You know, and if they are, it's like, oh, a little bit here, a little bit there. But, you know, we have a president that's giving the rich multi-million dollar tax write-offs. We're, we're having like, oh, you know, it's like in the bill, it, 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 they might be working on the bill where, hey, you know, uh, giving, um, what's that, capital gains forgiveness or something like that. I think that will really help the cryptocurrency community because they, uh, you know, if we have a, a you know, a, market go up a lot of people cash out and try to get try to get those uh um that money what i have to pay in that cryptocurrency but i mean i mean the tax the, the capital gains right. tax capital gains but tax. When, what i'm saying is it's like in that video when i was going through skid row i was like hey once once srp blows up why don't all of us, you know, get together and maybe put a fraction of, we're going to be multimillionaires, you know, if we, we, you know, handle our business right and, you know, you know, make sure you do your taxes and different things and have everything set up where you're protected. Uh, but if everybody comes together and put like a little piece in, have a nonprofit, global nonprofit or something like that, and just like, hey, we, the XRP community or the crypto com crypto community can help different people, you know, LA, Africa, whoever is in need, we, we can show help because if the rich and powerful right now is not doing it, why, why can't uh, we do it? I, I saw a TikTok where they was talking about Jeff Bezos millions or trillions or something like that with grains of rice. It was like, well, a couple of these grains of rice are millions and these are trillions. And it was like a big thing of rice. It's like, wait a minute. All we need is a certain amount and, and help, you know, Jeff Bezos probably wipe out um, poverty all by his little lonesome. <laughs> you know, if his wife ain't took, uh, <laughs> you know, half of it, maybe she could uh, wipe out uh, poverty on her end. But you, you kind of see where I'm getting at. And that's all I'm saying is it, if we're lucky enough where I truly believe XRP will be $10,000 a coin. You know, if my thinking is if Bitcoin can do it with no use case at 20000 why not XRP with, with a million use cases, you know, reach at least 10000 Now it's going to take some time. Two, three, four, five, six, twenty years. Hey, you know, uh, you know, as Lord gives me time on this earth, hey, I, uh, I can wait. You know, but I believe if we all get together, we can help everybody else. And when you help other people, the Lord blesses you. And that's what I would say. In a well, I think that's beautiful, and that uh, that actually is one of the reasons that. Um, I decided to go the interview route with my channel and what I'm doing because I'm looking to be able to connect um, with as many people in the community as I can. Give You're doing a great job. Well, I appreciate that. And then give everybody the chance to share their story, right? Because everybody's story is important because there are people out there who will, who will relate to what you have to say. And, and I interviewed Brad Kimes. He was the first person that we ever interviewed. And hey, I love congratulations. Brad. Yeah. And I love Brad to death. I consider him to be a friend of mine. But there are people that would listen to Brad and not connect. But mm -hmm. when they listen to you, they're going to they're going to hear it. And mm -hmm. so that's 
that's why I went the interview route with my channel to be and with what I'm trying to do. So everybody gets a chance to share their story. And I'm looking to find like minded It's because it's funny that you said that I'm looking to find like minded people. And when, after we moon, we're connected and imagine again, I'm I'm. I've read Think and Grow Rich too. I'm following. Okay, okay. I'm following the formula. I'm putting together a mastermind, all right, of like-minded individuals. But think of the good we could do together if we were not only like-minded individuals who were connected on a common goal of serving others, well-funded. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? <laughs> so I'm exactly. trying. I'm not just trying to connect the dots. My all of my YouTube influencers already did that for me. They connected the dots to me of what Ripple and XRP and the whole things. I got it. Now mm -hmm. what I'm doing is trying to connect the people. And then after the moon, we find different things where we feel like we can do good, good deeds, good works and service to others. And again, think about it. 200 of us, same common goal mm -hmm. and well-funded. What mm -hmm. what good could we accomplish together if we'll At the just minimum wipe out hunger, <laughs> you know, and, and help if, people around the world? If we connect, there's no telling what good we could accomplish together. But in order for that to happen, we all have got to get a chance to know each other and and find out if we are on the same wavelength if we're if we do believe in the same things and i i, I agree with you that <clears throat> i'm 58 years old now i've been blessed with being able to have the ability to sell not mm -hmm. not everybody can do it it's right it's, right it's not much fun to be perfectly honest with you <laughs> until, until actually sitting on the phone you know from 8 to 11 cold caller you know <laughs> no 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 but man i i was in, when i first i sold roofing for a good bit and the Ooh. first now check this out the first 268 doors that i knocked on i heard no no mm -hmm. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> But what did I do? Because I read Think and Grow Rich in my 20s, what mm -hmm. did I do? I said, I'm going to persist until I succeed. So I went up enthusiastically and knocked on door 269. And guess what happened in the next 12 months after that? I sold, over, took off. I sold over $800,000 worth of roofs, right? Only because I was willing to knock on door 269. And the so first, the first yes is always the hardest. Ah, uh, but I never imagined. I mean, I left another job. I was making great money. And after I was about knocking on door 250, I was beginning to ask myself if I'd made myself a big old tremendous mistake. But then I fell back on my faith and believed that, you know, I didn't fall into this by accident. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. And so again, I kept knocking and then I finally hit on door 269 and the floodgates open. Hey, so, congratulations. Well, I appreciate that. Well, it helped to reaffirm my faith in the way that I believe things work. And so uh, quick question. Again, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Have you ever uh, read that uh, book uh, it came out a few, a few years ago, a uh, go for no. Have you heard no, of that? But, yeah, look, look that, that book up. It, it's a great story. Uh, I think it has two authors, but it's a short read. Okay. But, uh, I, it, it, it motivates you. Got it. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a guy named Chris Voss? Uh, I'm not sure. You Google look, look him up on YouTube, okay? Mm -hmm. Chris Voss. He used to be the lead hostage negotiator for the FBI. Yeah, I re I remember. Yeah, I think uh, Brad Times uh, spoke of him as well. And Chris Chris Voss is is very very strong on going for no. Mm -hmm. You ask questions. You don't want to miss out on this, do you? Scarcity. <laughs> you don't want to miss out on this, do you? And mm -hmm. it, when you when you elicit a no from another person, their brain has to engage to think about why they're going to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So. 
Chris Foss is my negotiating hero. Um, <laughs> but I, I love that guy. So one of the things, again, that uh, that I'm looking to do is connect the dots, find like-minded people. And then after the moon, we all get tight together and find things that we might want to try to do together as a group, well-funded. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of good that we can do. And what I'm what I was getting at earlier is that I'm 58 now. I'm getting into the third chapter of my life, right? Mm -hmm. So the last chapter of my life, what I want to be able to, you know, look back on when I'm taking my last breath is how many lives was I able to impact on a positive basis? Okay. okay. I'm not making any more money. I can make money. I can survive. I can sell. I've mm -hmm. learned, I've learned that skill, mm -hmm. but how can I spend the last third of my life working on making an impact, serving others. That's the driving force of what I want to do with the la last third of my life. And I believe that finding these other people in the XRP community who are of like mind, are that's going to resonate with them. And then all we got to do is keep in touch. And mm -hmm. then as soon as the moon hits, then we'll get together and figure out what we want to try to do for good for serving others. So I, I, I'm glad we, we came together because I, I'm on the same page with you because I, I was like that, you know, way when I, I did the video, because it's like, I, I'm like, wait a minute, you see all these people talking about, oh, I want to get a new Lambo, this and that. It, it, it's all good. You know, it's like I, I got my dream house, you know, it's not a mansion or whatever, but hey, I want my little puppy in, in Ladera Heights, you know, but it's like, oh, OK, you know, but I still want to help people. You know, and I, I like how you put that together. And even though we're not going to agree on everything, as long as we're on the same page on helping people, w w we can come come to a common goal and like, all right, what steps we need to do that uh, take care of, you know, because the good thing about XRP community, we're all over the world. Yeah. Right? And, and once we get everybody set up, you know, we can have different uh, – liaisons like all right well we have uh xrp europe you know uh handling different people in europe and helping them uh we have uh you know uh you know the xrp agent in los angeles he, he's helping out california and, and watts and different things you know we have xrp army news you know he he's in his neck in the woods you know helping families and 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 uh people that's that's you know need help and stuff and and it just go, grows from there and just imagine you know you help one person that person helps another person and when you have unlimited funds and you use the and that's a good way is like hey we have a nonprofit we have it set up on the blockchain you know we use all the digital technologies to make sure that the funds are allocated in such a way where they're actually taking uh, taking care of people you're not going to yep. be hearing about the XRP army news you know it's like uh bezeling millions from this organization and that organization and and it's right. a scam everybody it, you know, is is helping other people, and it, and it's on a public ledger, and it's yep. undisputable. You there know? you go. So, All right, well, listen, I'm glad that we see eye to eye here. <laughs> yes, we do. And you, you, you will be. Uh, I, I'm sure you're going to be glad to hear that everybody that I've interviewed. It's the same. It seems like we're all on the same wavelength. There are a lot of really mm -hmm. good people. And and so two things uh, as we sign off. Number one, um, of all the people that I have been asking to do interviews, what would you say to them? If there mm -hmm. has been, if, if I've asked, you know, other people in our XRP community to, to sit and have a friendly conversation like we have, and mm -hmm. they're hesitating, what would be your message to them? Uh, come and tell your story because everybody has a different story. You know, my story is different from your story. Your story is different from Joe Blow's story. And your story can maybe help somebody that's on the fence 
because like like the guy who was coming on to me was like big connect big connect big connect i was like man you're crazy you know but i was like all right well let me hear what you have to say then once i got into it i'm like oh okay and it's a lot of times where i i learned from mistakes i lost uh cryptocurrency i was hacked uh on my phone uh i you know a lot of people were like uh blah corn base but uh when i got hacked it helped me retreat from my coins they they wiped me out on binance but it, different people like uh crypto dad i've learned different things so if you could tell your story that could help somebody else save their funds and uh maybe educate them where they can help their family and then once we elevate together we can all be a stronger xrp community and none of this foolishness of course we're not going to agree on everything but just understand we have a bigger goal in mind you know and like uh xrp united with uh his um website uh the uh crypto arcade i really appreciate him and so many crypto currency youtubers uh twitter uh, twitter people you know, I can't name them all, but they all put their own value on what they 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 feel and believe. And it, that makes, uh you know, the XRP community so special. So yeah. if you're on the fence, just, you know, just, hey, just have a conversation off, off camera and then, you know, see how you feel. And then, you know, it, let it go from there. That's and and I have been... um one of the strongest desires that I have is to get more of our women in the XRP community to do this. Oh, here he is so many. We so interviewed many. her and she's one of my favorite people. I caught in my mind, I refer to her as the standard um, mm. my res level of admiration and respect for that lady knows no bounds, but I'm trying to get all as many of the women in the community so we can hear the female voice of our XRP army. So do you have any message out to go out to the women and the women that are watching this video, you know who you are because I'm a persistent little turd and I've been, <laughs> asking, I've been asking you ladies over and over and over and over and over. And the bottom line is I'm a guy that I will persist until I succeed. I'm knocking on the door 269 times guy so I will keep asking. So you're you're either going to block me, talk to me, but I will ne or, or, but I'm never going to keep asking because I believe that the feminine voice in our XRP community needs to be represented. Right. And and also too, and, you know, you're you're in sales, I'm in sales, you know, we're we're not going to um we're we're not going to uh, close a deal in, unless we uh, keep on reaching uh, the prospect, and it right. takes uh, eight to twelve contacts before we actually have a conversation. A lot of times, and that's why ninety percent of realtors don't make any money because they don't want to follow up. And you're since you're in sales, you have a specific gift because you know what it takes to follow up. And what I would say to the the women XRP army is make your presence known, come out and let, let us know how you feel, because it's like, I'm just going to say this right now. XRP army is dominated by the men and the women need to come out and show uh, uh, what they have to bring to the table. And that way we can learn from you women because your experiences are way different than ours. You know, and you could teach us some things and we could teach you some things, but together it builds us stronger. And another uh, person, I, I don't know her name offhand, but she's um, a news reporter. The lady that's real good uh, with the XRP community that does excellent interviews with uh, uh, Brad Garlinghouse. I would love for you to talk to her. You know, yeah, the, I believe if you. Yeah, the CNN gal Chatterley. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And if you yeah. had her on and ask her to have more XRP Army ladies uh, come on, uh, she it, 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 it would probably help, too. So that's uh, what I'm saying. And, and again, the, the, the most important part is, is that, again, everybody understand that you're even if you don't feel like your story has any 
you know, you're not important. Nobody cares about what you think. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Mm. People are fascinated with stories and finding out about other people. And your story has as much value as anybody else's. And what I, I'm just trying to do what I can to be able to get as many voices out there as we can so we can touch as many people out there in the world. Um, and then the last thing that I'd like to say is that I always invite everybody in advance to come back um, in a month or two, and then we can see where we were on July 15th and how we progressed and then kind of have a catch up conversation because I'd like this to be an ongoing friendship that we have started Smart. instead of just a one time wham, bam, see you later. I'd like right. to develop relationships with all the people that I've begun to meet. Hey, so you, have, good. You, have, you have an open invitation to come back at some point and I'll be, I've got, you know, I know how to keep track. So <laughs> I, I will make my little note in my little calendar and I will be. Right, right. And I have thoroughly enjoyed meeting someone else. And it's, it's always regenerates my engine when I find another friend that I see things eye to eye with. And I feel like I've done that with you today. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, you inviting me onto the show. I'm I'm deeply honored, uh, and um, uh, I hope my little rant <laughs> helps somebody. And you know, for people that uh, was invited and hadn't uh, popped on yet, hey, come on, tell your story. You know, I would love to hear from you. Many people would love to hear from you. And uh, you know, we're we're an army, one XRP person at a time. So uh, with your input, you know, you, you have, a, you know, you have a say, you know, on how you live your life, what you do, and this could help uh, other people that's on the fence. And, and I appreciate you saying that. And I hope uh, as we sign off and I've got something uh, after I turn the broadcast off, I wanted to talk with you something real briefly, but the last thing I'd like to say is, um, uh, I hope you were listening to that, all of the women, and I hope also that uh, Bearable Bull and Digital right. Asset Investor, I hope both of y'all heard that as well, uh, because I'm going to keep coming and I'm going to keep asking until y'all have a friendly conversation with me, <laughs> because I admire it. Come on, Bearable Bull, Digital Asset Investor. I, what about I, the Working I, Money Channel? Working yeah, Money yeah. Channel. <laughs> And I love all of you guys and what you've done for me to help educate me. And I appreciate it. And I want to be Mr. able to share. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to share and let other people know a little bit more about you. Than just, asset investor. <laughs> than just the news that you're sharing with us. So thank you again. And uh, everyone take care and we'll see you next time. God bless. God bless.